Okay. Hi, I am Shelly Kunishige with the Hawaii Department of Transportation. Thank you for joining us for this virtual public meeting for the H1 eastbound improvements from Ola Lane to Liki Liki Highway off ramp. Um, this meeting is being recorded. So, um, and also in the chat, I'm including a link to the our Title VI virtual public information form. This is um, entirely voluntary, but if you would um, be willing to, to fill out the form, this will help us understand who is participating in our public meetings. And we will get st started shortly. I am going to um, share my screen with the present with today's presentation. And um, now I'm going to introduce our deputy director for highways, Mr. Ed Sniffen. He will be doing today's presentation. Thank you, Shelley. Should we get started now or should we wait a couple minutes? Um, let's see. One, two. I believe we have some member some members from the public. Um, and it is 1202, maybe three minutes start at 1205. Excellent. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Apologize. Um, if you don't mind, let's wait a couple of minutes to get um, to allow people to get on. Um, but in a couple of minutes, we'll start. Thank you. And for those of you who have just joined, um, I'm going to put our Title VI form in the chat box again. If you are able to, please fill it out. It's entirely voluntary, but it does help us collect data on um, the people we are reaching with our public outreach efforts. OK, I see a hand in the chat. Um, Mr. Ms. Shin. Hello, did you have a did you have a question? I'm I'm sorry, um, Mr. Mission, I cannot hear you. If you could type your question in the chat. Okay, thank you. So I've lo I've lowered your hand for you. Okay, it is now 12:04. We will get started at 12:05 to allow for um, any any extra participate um, public members to participate. Okay, it is now 12:05. We will get started again. This meeting is being recorded, and giving the presentation today will be our Deputy Director for our Highways, Mr. Ed Sniffen. And um, Ed, if you could take it away. Thank you very much, Shelley. Hello, everyone. Ed Sniffen from Hawaii Department of Transportation. Thanks so much for taking time to be out today. We're talking today about our H1 eastbound improvements that we're looking at between Ola Lane and, and Lique Lique Interchange. Um, today we're presenting the project, um, sharing the details in general, um, going through what the project looks like from our perspective, trying to get feedback from the community to see what you would see as far as impacts, um, improvements to, to your community, or temporary impacts during construction. So we can start folding it into the project and deliver something that's that's good for everyone. So we'll talk through on, on, on this presentation where the project is. Um, you see in the map, it's between Ola Lane and Lique Lique Highway, with most of the work occurring between the Ola Lane to Gulick Avenue overpass area. Um, in that area, we're looking at adjusting the highway improvements to ensure that we maximize the safety in that area, um, minimize congestion, and make sure that while we're doing that, improving the safety um, and reducing congestion, we are, we're maximizing the use of the right-of-way that we have and trying to minimize any of the right-of-way acquisition that we go outside of it. So during this project, <clears throat> you can see from the picture above, um, there's three lanes coming from one little freeway that merges with two lanes from um, H1 eastbound. When that occurs, there's several things that occur. Um, there's a lot of weaving um, action in that area. 
there's you can see that when we when we um, adjusted this right away in the past, lanes are very tight. Um, and there's no shoulders for pull offs or anything in that area. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is the big improvements that we're looking at for for this project. Next slide. So overall, <clears throat> when we have that three lanes coming in from one little freeway, uh, tying into the two lanes that come in from H1, the left lane of H1 and the right lane of one little freeway merge up after the after the older lane area. The project is intended in its uh, I mean in its simplest form to eliminate that merge. So. At the top of the, of the screen, you see the current alignment. There's three continuous lanes that come in from the Fort Shafter Flats area that go through up to the uh, Kalihi interchange, where there's four continuous lanes. Two of those lanes that come through from um, H1, the left side merges with the right side of Monolo Freeway. One drops off at Lique Lique for continue, but only, uh, only three through. So it, it creates a bottleneck in this area. What our project is intending to do is eliminate the merge by adding in a fifth lane, um, an auxiliary lane that'll take the right lane from H1 to a drop off at Lique Lique Highway. It will allow the left lane of H1 not to have to merge with the right lane of Monlo Freeway and to take four lanes through Lique Lique Interchange. That area of it, the interchange on Lique Lique um, was widened to include or actually restriped to include four through lanes um, in 2013. This project ties into that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so it's just a typical section of, of what we're looking at. Existing is the, the one on the left side with uh, four lanes. Those lanes are uh, range from 10 to 10 and a half feet with shoulders that range from one to two feet on the inside and outside portions. What we're looking at is adding a lane through this area, uh, widening all lanes to 11 feet, creating an inside shoulder on the left side of the, the roadway of four feet, and an outside shoulder um, that ranges from two to eight feet. The outside shoulder is really important for us to make sure that we're, there's a pullover area if there's any issues that occur with vehicles um, throughout that, that area. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so it's just a plan view of, of what we're looking at. Um, adding that inside shoulder, adding that outside shoulder, widening the lanes to 11 feet in that area. <clears throat> now the 11 feet, foot lanes in this area is important because there's 100,000 vehicles that go through this portion of this route daily. And about 3,000 of those vehicles are large trucks. Those trucks are generally um, wide enough that they're out there at the, the limits of the 10 foot lanes. Giving them that additional foot to ensure it has a foot on each side of the vehicle makes it a lot safer for those trucks to travel it, traverse this route. <clears throat> this map also, or this plan view also shows the area of acquisition that we're considering. As I said, we're minimizing the acquisition as much as possible, doing all the improvements within the right of way. But there's two areas that we're going to need additional capacity, additional um, property. This is one of them. There's a 50 square foot property that we're working on to acquire from Kali Union Church. It's just pretty much where the wall juts out into, into the roadway area. We want to smooth out that transition to ensure that we can put in a lane and shoulder that's safe in that area. The second place that we're going to need to acquire property is under Bullock um, overpass, as we'll be extending the bridges in that area. Next slide, please. <clears throat> as part of the project, um, we're going to be widening the bridge that's that's going over Richard Lane and Kali Stream. When we widen this, we're going to keep the existing structure in place and add to the structure to extend that or to widen the bridge um, over the stream. Next slide, please. When we do this, we're making sure that we take care of all historic properties. Um, the wall in this area is approaching 50 years and is eligible for the register, but this project is not going to have any impacts on this wall. So we're, we're, we're trying to minimize as much as possible any impacts to any historic properties as we do this project. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this, this, this map just kind of shows um, as the project progresses. All, most of the work will happen um, up to at the uh, Gulik Overpass area. We'll extend to the Kali interchange um, as it feathers back down to the existing conditions. Okay, next slide, please. 
<clears throat> this just graphically shows what we're looking at at Gulick. Um, the reason that we stopped the four lane addition at Kali Interchange in 2013 is this Gulick overpass is a physical barrier to adding more lanes within the right of way we have. So we're going to be extending this um, bridge, making it longer by 15 feet in both directions to ensure that we have sufficient space on the eastbound side to add that lane through this through this structure. Now, the reason that we're adding space on the on the other side, on the westbound side of Gulick Overpass is because we need that space for post tensioning of the existing slab. <clears throat> the way we're looking at this is we're keeping the slab that or the bridge slab that's there right now. We're adding length to it by adding on structural components and tying that whole bridge portion together with post tensioning. So we'll need the, ex the extension on both sides to do so. When we widen the westbound side, that will allow us to, to get another widened shoulder area for safety in that portion as well. Next slide, please. I'm sorry, let's go back one real quick. <clears throat> Significant portion of this is when we when we start adjusting the length of this Gulick overpass, it allows us with post tensioning with this structural improvements to increase the height of this, this structure as well. At this time, it's about 14 feet, um, three inches. And because of that, the bottom inch or two of this bridge gets hit weekly by trucks that are a little bit too high that are going through this area. Most of the time it's um, trucks that leave their wheels up that extends the height of their vehicle that hits the bottom of the bridge. But because of that, <clears throat> there's concrete debris that's on the road that we need to shut down lanes to clean up and, and the like. And there's also the potential that if something hits that bridge um, while it's moving at, at high speeds, there could be a potential that it causes safety issues uh, within the route as well. So increasing the height by six inches will get Gulick overpass higher than the Kali interchange bridges and that never gets hit, which means that uh, we now reduce that 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 um, safety potential or that that danger potential in this structure. Next slide, please. <clears throat> While we're building this project, um, there's going to be impacts to accessibility over Gulick. Um, this project we're intending to be about 18 to 24 months. And during that 18 to 24 month period, we're looking at um, keeping that one lane access across Gulick throughout most of the, the construction. But there's going to be a three month period where we need to fully shut Gulick down. <clears throat> one of the big things is we don't want to impact the significant number of people who are using Gulick for bike and pet access. So the first thing we would do as, far, as part of this project is to put in place a temporary pedestrian bridge that crosses H1. <clears throat> It'll cross over to the park um, from the opposite side near um, the Gulick overpass. When we do that, <clears throat> we'll need to shut down um, H1 completely for a 12 hour period. And of course, we're gonna be looking at timeframes that minimize impacts to those that use H1 and to the communities where these traffics will flow to. So we're looking at a nighttime closure, of course, uh, between 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. on a weekend. So we can minimize any impacts to H1 and any impacts to the neighboring communities uh, when we start detouring traffic around that area. It's, there's going to be twice that we do that. Once when we drop the pedestrian over or the new pedestrian uh, bridge in place, and then the second time when we take it out. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to be temporarily utilizing portions of the city park where the bridge is landing. It's going to be used as a staging area and as a landing area for this temporary structure. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> so as I said, while we're constructing Gulick, uh, or while we're instructing, constructing the improvements in this area, there's going to be work zones that we keep, but there's going to be one lane in each, each direction that we, we keep uh, throughout, especially during the peak periods. During non-peak times, the contractor may shut down to a single lane in one direction um, or contra float in, um, in both directions to ensure that they have the work area that's necessary off peak. But during peak times, we'll always have one lane in each direction, except for the three month period that we'll need to fully shut it down. Next slide, please. <clears throat> yeah, so as I said, we're, we're gonna try and minimize to the extent possible the impacts to all the communities um, that surround this this project. We're looking at non-peak times um, for the most part to do our work or especially if they impact any lineage. And we'll make sure we keep those those lanes um, flowing during the project um, to the extent possible. 
But again, there's going to be a full closure for three months. That's going to be necessary to finish up the, the post tensioning. Okay. <clears throat> so while we're doing this project, this is we're we're kind of in the in that planning um, and study stage. We're doing our traffic impact assessment reports that study the different intersections around the project to see what impacts we could have. Um, during the project when we shut um, shut Gulick down, during the project when we shut H1 down, and during the project when we start restricting lineage um, on the different uh, on the different routes or those two different areas, we're studying these intersections here uh, to see what impacts we would we would have on these so we can mitigate them now. Next slide, please. <clears throat> When we when we extend the uh, Kali Stream Bridge outwards or widen it, uh, we're going to have um, potential impacts to those that are riding on Richard Lane. But we'll make sure that we coordinate with the community that lives there, and we'll have flaggers to ensure that we can um, keep the keep them safe as they go through the work area. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we're looking at getting through our environmental stages by summer of this year, um, and then finalizing our PSNE beyond that and trying to get this project out to construction or ready to advertise for construction this year. We're anticipating that the project's going to take about 18 to 24 months and we're trying to see in our studies how we minimize any impacts to the public while we progress them. Next slide please. That's all I have. I wanted to make sure that this presentation was very short and we can go back to any slides that you'd like to if you have any questions, comments or concerns about them. I wanted to make sure that we had enough time for questions and answers from anybody who's here. Thank you very much for your time. OK, are there any questions from any participants? Sorry, Shelley, I should add uh, we have our project design team from our design branch here. And we also have our, our consultant who's working on the project with us available. So if there's any technical questions, any questions on on um, scheduling or any feedback we'd, uh, you'd like us to consider while we progress this project forward, um, they're all here to make sure that, that we take care of this. OK, we have a question from a Miss Rooney. Miss Rooney, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Um, so I guess the first question I had was, um, some of this information isn't in the EA, and I feel like the description of the bridge is like just removing a lip, and I just wanted to confirm how, like the alignment of that. Like the like the design graphic wasn't in there, and yeah, and the description of the bridge appears to be different, and I'm just trying to understand like which one should we go by when providing comments. Um, we should go by this one. So we're going to be extending the bridge in both directions by 15 feet. We okay. can remove the lip on the bottom side that's about six inches because we're increasing the height of the bridge by six inches. Okay. When we do that um, and we and we tie the structure in together with post tensioning, we're able to increase the height of the bridge by getting rid of that lip. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we have a question from the chat from um, an Eri guy. Are the properties already in the the process of purchasing to widen the H1? So we've already spoken with the church to discuss the, the purchase acquisition of that 50 square feet that we're going to need <laughs> um, in that area. Uh, we haven't finalized that discussion with them, just the discussion so far. The portions that are under uh, Gulick overpass, uh, we've already started those conversations as well. Nothing has been finalized as we're still going through the design process. OK, and um, we have a Mr. Gareth um, Sakakita with his hand up. Please go ahead, Ed. sir. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Ed. <clears throat> the, uh, so the two lanes coming from H1, the rightmost lane will go only into the Licky Licky cutoff. That's correct. It's a drop off. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have another question from um, Mr. Ms. Faagai in the chat. Would it be better for the trucks to go off the highway instead of increasing height? <clears throat> so no, I think uh, we want the trucks here. The, the, the function of our state roads is to make sure that we pull the high volumes, high speed, um, high capacity vehicles onto the state routes. 
So we can minimize those vehicles going onto the local roads, the parallel routes. Um, that'll allow us to make those routes more livable, um, less congested, if we can get provide the volumes here. Does, does that make sense? Hi, sorry, but what are the numbers of the trucks that are high enough that actually hits the bridge itself? So in general, most of the residents and everyone, they have lower cars, so we go through it, no problem. Yeah, so it's mostly those trucks that are delivering um, materials, and especially those that are, and you know, Gareth can correct me if I'm wrong, mostly when those those trucks hit the bottom of, of this bridge, it's concrete trucks uh, with their wheels up. Sometimes it's a truck that over, I guess, over um, fills their vehicle and the like. But in general, um, for all of those, it, it's it's our commercial, it's our um, our freight vehicles that are coming through that area that need that height. So for us, if we can give that height to ensure that it's as as high as Kalihi Interchange that never gets hit, we don't have to worry about this issue anymore. And sorry, what is the expected cost to heighten uh, the bridge? Well, the bridge heightening comes from the extension. We're allowed to we're allowed to, to increase the height because we're extending the bridge. So it's not a mutually exclusive thing. The bridge itself will cost 25 million for us to extend and then to increase the height. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought it was gonna we'd have to do two things to increase no. and widen at the same time. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. Okay, and Ms. Rooney, do you have further questions? I see your hand is still up. Nope, sorry, I didn't fix that. My apologies. Okay, and again, this um, this meeting is being recorded. We will um, put the recording and the presentation on our presentations page, and I will include a link to that in the chat. So can you go back down to the end slide? Just make sure everybody has the a way to, to provide more input. This is definitely not the last chance to have discussions on this. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you need more information, please feel free to email our project manager or our consultants uh, or send it to them both uh, to make sure we can get back to you guys and include any considerations um, that you may have into the projects. So during this time frame, we'll be continuing our outreach, um, outreaching to your legislators, to your neighborhood boards, uh, to ensure that we can gather as much info and input uh, during this process, so we can make this project um, beneficial to everybody for this uh, in this area. I just have a, another question uh, for the properties that you guys need to purchase. Who is actually going to be purchasing it? Um, it's the state of Hawaii that would purchase it. So we would purchase um, DOT would purchase it from the property owners. Mahalo, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I've put the link to our presentations page, so expect to see the presentation and the recording um, of this meeting in about an in about another day. Um, the link to the draft day draft environmental assessment is also in the chat, as well as on our um, the notice the public notice we sent out regarding this meeting. Um, if there are no further questions. Um, Again, I'm going to ask if you could, if you do have some time to please fill out the really short Title VI form um, for us that's in the chat, and that will help us determine, um, figure out who's um, who we're reaching with these public meetings. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. I know that you have many, oh, many things to do during your day. Uh, do you mind if I ask a couple more questions? Oh, Sorry. Please, please. Sure, go ahead. Uh, for the environmental assessment, will it be uh, available to the public? Yes, the process and the document is available to the public. 
Is it going to be on the website or how do we find it? Sorry, I'm, I'm unsure how to find it. Uh, I have the link in our yeah. chat and um, it so that will be included with the presentation and the recording. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for being here. Oh, well, thank you for presenting. Excellent. Sounds good. I think, Shelly, we can wrap up. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Happy New Year to all. Thank you. Ending the meeting now. <laughs>